welcome happy happy 2021 welcome back to another episode of the mindless horror podcast today we have two legends of the farm the specifically the scary farm we got with us uh, ed cobb and jeremy here uh so this is gonna be a great time. Uh, we're gonna be having a great time reminiscing on that uh, that beautiful place we call the Scary Farm. How I, y'all doing today? I think it, I think it's the beautiful place we call home. Really. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah we'll, thank you for having us. Yeah. We'll eventually call it home, and thank you for yeah. having us on. No, thanks for thanks for coming on. I know I know uh, this is something that we appreciate you. Yeah, uh, thank you. And we appreciate you guys a hundred percent for bringing the nightmares to life every year, um, but. I, I, this is a podcast I've been wanting to do for some time, um, <clears throat> specifically because I, I follow Sinatra on Instagram, and watching you guys together in the off season is the funniest thing. It's its own reality. Thank show. you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I've actually told Ed that, the, that he has a following now, where I get people that message me and ask, "Dude, what, what's Ed doing today?" Well, <laughs> you can you can thank COVID for that because I'll tell you, I was there one night. I was cooking, and this guy was bored. What else are we going to do? This was back in like in, in in it was in March, like late March, and I'm cooking, you know, dinner, and he decides to videotape me and go cooking with Ed Cobb. And he does another one, Cooking with Ed Cobb, Volume 2. And he decides to put Chuck Mangione in the background, which old school guys are like, oh, this is a good song. Yeah. I'll admit a couple of them were kind of irritating, as you could tell, like the check email, the stupid stuff. But eventually <laughs> it became really, really funny. And it's just way too funny. He, there's at least like 30 of them now. It's a, yeah, it's its own it's its own little reality show. I love it. <laughs> it I, I, I like specifically when I see Sinatra on Instagram with a story, I'm like, I got to see if he did any Ed Cobb today. And yeah, I'm yeah, never yeah. disappointed. <laughs> never disappointed. It's, it's... Well, a little backstory on that, how that actually started. It didn't actually start with Ed. It actually, uh, I, I worked part time. I worked a few hours a week at a oh, the Bemo. Bemo. Oh yeah, the bad and I and I had it on my Snapchat, and there was a guy that was a, a courier or a delivery guy, and he's a cool guy. His name's his his name's actually Anthony too, and uh, I used to Snapchat him like I'd be walking around the corner while he was like filling out paperwork or something. I go, dude, are you gonna work today? Are you gonna do anything? And I and I actually started having people like, hey man who's that guy you're always harassing? And I'm like, Oh, this is just a, it's a, it's a courier guy that works for one of the uh, alcohol distributors. Oh, dude is funnier and shit. What you do with him. You got to keep doing that. And it just kind of steamrolled, but it's weird now because like I actually have people, I have, I, 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 I have like 19,000 followers on Instagram and they legitimately are like, Hey, you haven't done an Ed Cobb thing. What's he doing? Is he dead? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, no, no, I just haven't caught him doing something stupid or t- daily life. Don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll get it. I'll get it. I'm surprised yeah. I didn't do one yesterday of taking down the Christmas lights with Ed Cobb. I'm surprised I didn't catch that. You should have got me on the roof. I know. But I wasn't thinking. I was thinking, well, I'm going to get these lights down. And it didn't come to mind until after, but it was too late. I, but, I, I mean – now, now that I picture, I mean, you saying you're on the roof, the only movie that comes to mind right now is Christmas Vacation. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I, 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 except, except our ladder works. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, we have a working ladder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I enjoy watching you, you on, on Instagram because, I mean, we keep I – mean, everybody really keeps up nowadays with Instagram. Um, you have to, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, another thing I love about you guys too is um, how into, like – pop culture you guys are as far as like from the 80s but even back in the day and stuff like a lot of the, the stuff i like every time i see you guys like i remember one time you guys are watching bond film you doing a bond marathon and i was like dude that is legit like if i can spend a whole we have to finish it by the way <laughs> yeah we haven't <laughs> finished it <laughs> yeah no, <we> i mean <laughs> i specifically uh when it was around the t- and this was the, the one of the most saddest things that happened in 2020 but um when sean connery passed away uh, yeah, I, I really wanted to watch all of his Bond, Bond films in specific again, just go back and just do a little tribute to him. But uh, mm-hmm. what was good about that this last year is when I went to go visit Sammy in Arizona, uh, movie theaters are open there. So that was like a blessing. I love the movies. I, I, I Before the pandemic, I was going to the movies at least twice a week. And mm-hmm. um, one of the movie theaters we went to was screening um, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. 
And I was like, dude, we have to pay tribute to Sean Connor. We have to go see that movie. And <laughs> you can ask the entire the entire day leading up to that screening. I, I just kept saying Junior in Sean Connery's voice <laughs> because that is probably the most <laughs> I remember in that film if you're going Junior. I mean... <laughs> You mean you weren't saying pushy? Pushy, Junior. That's that's another one. <laughs> I also love, that's my favorite. I, I love when Sean Connery says that, but my favorite scene in that whole movie, and I think it's a lot of people's favorite scenes in that whole movie, is when he punches the guy off the the blimp and he goes, "No ticket," and then everybody just pulls out their ticket. It, oh it yeah, the best. I love it. Um, yeah, I, I love it so much, and I also love too that uh, much like myself, you guys are big Funko Pop collectors. Yeah, that yeah. was an accident, but yeah, that was a total accident. Especially for Jeremy, he's got like four times as many as I do. Do you know how much you have in specific, Jeremy, or no? I probably have over a thousand, but uh, I, 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 I tend to collect the uh, high end ones. Right. So I probably have close anywhere between twenty to thirty thousand dollars in pops. I, wow, Sammy, you thought that's I, not, Sammy, but, come on, but thought that's not, but that's not the crazy one. The crazy one is my dad was smart enough, and my mom. Somebody told him in the early uh, '80s, like it was around '79, '80. He goes, you know, they got these Star Wars Kenner action figures out, Jerry. You might want to start buying them and keeping them in the plastic. Don't open them. So two years ago, my dad actually completed. We have every single. Star Wars Kenner action figure released. You have the entire set. That probably now would go for forty-five to sixty thousand dollars, depending on. So yeah, I've got quite a bit of money invested in toys around here. That's always. I mean, my my dad's the same way. I think that's the reason why I'm into the things I'm into and why I'm a collector. Um, my dad's a die-hard Superman fan. Uh, favorite Superman of all time. He loves uh, Christopher Reeve. Uh, that was the mm. Superman he grew up with, and I remember watching those films as a kid and still loving them to this day. That is, in my opinion, that is Superman. Um, and, you know, I, I would see him collect stuff because he loves the comics and he loves everything. He would always collect all he, – if you go up to our house, the first thing you see in the front room, two display cases just filled with Superman statues and busts. Um, so I think growing up, especially after I got out of high school, I started collecting more because, you know, when you get a job – uh, you start spending your money stupidly, uh, and it, it's it's fun. I, I will admit it's fun, and <laughs> I, I don't regret one purchase I've ever purchased at all. I mean, I I have three hundred plus Funko Pops. I have uh, like Infinity Gauntlets. I have I have a lot of like memorabilia that when people walk into this studio, they just look around and just mesmerize of all the, the stuff I have in here. So, That's what it's all about, though. Yeah, uh, for I've me, I've also got a lot of Twilight Zone memorabilia. Nice. Um, I started collecting that about six years ago. I have the actual, uh, the red mystic seer with the devil head that William Shatner would put a penny in. Nice. And it would nice. tell your fortune. And I've got a talkie Tina. Oh, a, a bunch of like, you know, three and three quarter inch figures, just way too many, but yeah, it's endless, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can, it, add... when you walk into Ed's room, it's like the 40 year old virgin. <laughs> oh yeah. Like I saw with yours, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, my son, um, I got like a, I got like a lot of Sam from Trick or Treat. I got a lot of uh, Hellraiser. Hellraiser's good. I got all the original Hellraiser action figures, <laughs> and I'm collecting Creature of the Black Lagoon as well. So yeah, it's like the 40 year old virgin around here. I mean, I I can see there's a lot of trips to Frankenstein's then. A few. Uh, we, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we I, I we've kind of cut back on that with everything money wise and stuff but. although your dad likes to go a lot and he kind of says hey i'm going to frankenstein's today that's yeah. comical it is pretty funny watching him do his thing that's awesome my dad <laughs> likes to go to frankenstein's and barter if it's a hundred bucks <laughs> he'll go he'll, he'll he'll legitimately only go walk up he'll like go through his wallet and he'll like leave like x amount of dollars in his wallet and he'll walk up and go i see you got it for a hundred but man this is all i got on me and then he'll haggle with the guy and I'd say eight times out of 10, the guy's going to say, no, nah, no, nah, I can't do that. And he goes, well, I guess you're going to make me go to the ATM. The funny part is my dad doesn't have an ATM card. <laughs> so my dad will literally walk around the corner and go stand there and act like he went to the ATM and then come back. <laughs> and me and Ed just sit there laughing because we think it's, it's, I'm like, dude, you think she's at the Santa Fe, at the uh, Santa Fe spring swap me right now. I love that place. <laughs> that, was my, that was my home. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, 
I mean, I, I like I said, I love collecting. I love watching you guys on Instagram um, to see your Thank you. collection. Uh, hopefully, when. Hey, at least we got someone watching. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks, Sammy. <laughs> I, I'm hoping that um, if this all ends soon, we can all get together, hang out, and. Uh, There's no if. It's a win. Come on. It's a win. It is yeah. a win. It is. It is. When this ends, we'll all get together. We'll all geek out. And, uh, yeah, I'm down for that. So, obviously, it's time for the, for the big stuff now. Uh, Not Scary Farm. How long have you guys been doing Not Scary Farm for? Go ahead, Ed. <sighs> Way too long. Okay. <laughs> you know what? Uh, 1996 was my first year. That's, 1996. That's how long it's been. It's been consecutive. So, this past shit, shit year would have been my 25th consecutive year. Right. I, I wasn't even born yet. That's crazy to think about because that's pretty much almost half my life. <laughs> it's amazing that almost half my life has been devoted to that. It just Wild. blows my mind. Do you regret any of it or no? Once in a while I do, but I don't. No. No. I mean, yeah, there's some nights that I come home at 3 a.m. and I regret the hell out of it. But I get up the next day. I'm fine, man. Unless I get really sick. I've, I've gotten really sick before and it sucked ass. But I just got through it. Took a few days and we had we had a few days off to rest. You go back the next week and you're just ready to do to do it again because it's. I call it, you know, a paying hobby. That's pretty much what it is. A it's a hobby. hobby. I, I've always I've always found it curious when somebody goes, well, during my haunt career, and you're like, okay, you're getting a four hundred one k, you get medical, you get dental on this, <laughs> yeah, because it, it it's not a career, it's a hobby, right? It, and you know nobody's gonna get retirement from this. So I always like to I'm like Ed, I I and that's probably why me and Ed get along so well. I've always referred to it as a hobby. It's no no different than some people that work Renaissance Fair, right? It's something fun to do. You do it because it's fun to do. Yeah. Although, let's not get sidetracked. Yes, it's a paying hobby, but it's still a job. And I say that because just like any other job I've had in my life, you always have that person that you work with that doesn't treat it like it's a job. Once there's fun involved in the job, a lot of people tend to not treat it like a job, but that's what it is. Definitely. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I, I, I have seen people not at not, not at Scary Farm, but at, at other events where it's a hobby and it's I'm gonna give a hundred percent for five minutes and then I'm gonna take a chill pill for another couple minutes and then I'm gonna go back in. Um and so I definitely agree that it's it's still a job and there's definitely the standards that have to be met. But at the end of the day, most people are out there because it's fun. I mean, they enjoy making people like me. Um Fearful of walking in the yeah. the uh, in the fog that lies ahead. Uh, what year did you begin, Jeremy? My first year was uh, two, I, I, God, it was either 2010 or 2011. I can never remember. Um, I'm actually a, a licensed realtor. Oh, nice. And uh, times were tough being a realtor then. And I've I've always wanted to work Scary Farm. I always wanted, I, I mean, as a kid, my dad actually was the one that got me oh, in right. because uh, my dad actually would uh, get a little black light and get a little strobe light. And he'd get dressed up and put a little sheet up in the front door. And when the trick or treaters would come up, he would scare them. Right. And by the age of four or five, I was like, that's what I want to do. And I was done trick or treating probably at the age of six or seven. And I legitimately went to my mom and dad and go, I want to make a haunted house. And they have uh, two gates on both their sides of their house. So I would get a couple of buddies. And I mean, we were more than seven, eight, nine years old tops. And we would have walkthroughs in my backyard. And it was, I mean, there was no Halloween club. There was none of that stuff. So everything was homemade. Right. And yeah. people loved it. You know, then when Halloween club and stuff like that started happening, I had a regular job. I couldn't work Scary Farm. And to be honest, I didn't even really look into working Scary Farm. Right. So I would just do home haunts and I would just set up uh, my front yard or whatnot. I owned a house and I, d I did all that. And I had people, you know, tr just normal trick or treaters. And I was, it was always kind of boring for me because 
trick or treaters would start about five thirty, and by nine o'clock they were done. Right. And I'm like, I really didn't get my fix there. <laughs> and I go, dude, there's got to be something more. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna go work Scary Farm. I'm gonna I'm gonna try try to do this. So I actually went. And I actually thought you had to audition for everything. I had so to. When I got there way late, I guess they said get there at three o'clock in the morning, and I got there at two forty-five, and there was already a line around the building. I'm like, okay, they lied, <laughs> and it was horrible. I was like sitting there, I'm like, okay, it was so bad. The first day I could not actually go back. I had to wait until the second day, and when I got there, they go. Every single monster position is, is taken up, guys. So if you want to be a monster, sorry, it's not going to happen this year for you. Uh, we do have a couple positions in the log ride, and we have a couple positions in corn stalkers. And then by the time I got up there, corn stalkers was filled. And I thought, oh, dude, I'm just going to go in there and really oversell how enthused I am to do this. And I go, I want to be in the log ride. <laughs> This guy wants to be in the log ride. So he, so they, they sat me down and they filled out my paperwork. And they go, congratulations in the log ride. I got the third to last spot as a monster of that year. I was so happy though. Little did I know what, what was awaiting me in the log ride, but I was so happy. Uh, the first night was horrible. First night was just, oh my God, I was drenched. I was soaked. Uh, and that was when, that was the, uh, when they did something they, they called the, the bare bones, which was a Wednesday night, they didn't do shows. Right. And th that was the year, Ed, they had 20, 28 days of haunt. And it was, uh, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to pay my dues. I'm just going to sit here, do what I got to do in the log ride just to get through this. And I would highly suggest to anybody, never work the log ride. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad they did away with the log ride. And even to this day, when I meet somebody that's like, yeah, I worked the log ride, I'm like, yeah, you know, dude. You know, you paid your dues that year. That's nuts, man. What, what part of where, where were you at on the ride? Did you have like one uh, application, or did you rotate? When you uh, when you you know when you go on the log ride, you go down the first black the black drop where it's dark. Right. Yeah. And you turn in, you go around, and now now they have the guy that's got the tent with I think it's a raccoon that's taken off his hat. Right. I was located in that general uh, area. But for whatever reason, there's like a U-turn there. So every time a log, which, by the way, I was so bored scaring people in there, it hooked to a tether. So you can't go anywhere. You got like a three-foot walking distance. So you're hooked to a tether, sitting there, and about every nine seconds a log comes by. Imagine scaring people for, even with a lunch or a break or whatnot, six hours. Right. Doing nothing but having a log come by. Every nine seconds, so. Every nine seconds. Yeah. And there's only so much you can scare them doing. Yeah. So you're yeah. extremely like, oh, my gosh. Just get me through this, please. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, you know, every night I was drenched. Every night my feet were soaked. I mean, it was – and you're like the redheaded stepchild of haunt. <laughs> because nobody talks – you're in you're in the log ride. Nobody talks to you. Right. If you're in the mountain. You don't see anybody. Right. At all the whole night so i would show up and nobody talked to me <laughs> I was like, okay, this is just the way it is you know and i but that being said i was so excited to go back the next year right because i paid my dues i'm gonna do this second year i was in trick-or-treat which was the first year of trick-or-treat okay and that was great yeah i had a blast um i loved the people i worked with it was night and day and that's actually the first time i met ed we met each other in the mail restroom. <laughs> yeah. Not a joke. No, no better I, place to meet, right? I was yeah. shaking with my makeup. He was changing his clothes. I had no idea. I just wanted to go home. And and I see this dude that's almost as old as I am. So I go, okay, he's a cool dude. And whatever, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, he, he was in Ghost Town at that time. So he's taking off his – he actually thought I was one of the main tricksters. <laughs> I did, yeah, because we had the tricksters going around the park at the time. Right. Yeah. So I thought, well, he's old. He must be experienced. He must be the main trickster guy. Yeah. Because, <laughs> like I said, I didn't start. I didn't start working on until I was thirty-five. Right. So I didn't go through my twenties doing this, you know. So for me, it, it was a. It's still. Uh, I, I came in. And, I came in it looking 
in a different light than I'd say a 20 year old would. Right. There was a little bit more maturity when I came in, but I was like, Hey, you know, this is fun, you know? And then my third year I got, I was put into ghost town. I got uh, a gentleman, his name is Mike, but everybody calls him beast. All right. Uh, he was, uh, he was in guy, he was the beast for like 15 years. Mm -hmm. And that's like a big thing for us. You know, when somebody retires after especially somebody known right when they retire and you legitimately get their face you don't want to be like saying you're starstruck but you you're carrying on the legacy yeah you know and, and like for me it was a big deal because mike knew me right. we, me and mike had met each other and uh, we ran into each other at a at an event and he's like dude i had no idea you you that you got my face i'm so glad you got it <laughs> And I'm like, hey, you know, and he's like, dude, just do me one favor. Don't dress like me. Do it <sighs> totally different from, than I did. I'm like, you got it, man. You got it. You know, and then the following year, they moved me to Infected when it was in Camp Snoopy. So I did squad leading for two years uh, in Infected as a squad leader. And that was hell. I've heard stories about that. Like, I, I personally, I think as a guest, you enjoy it. But I've heard as, as squad leaders, it was nonstop. Uh, on average, on a slow night, which there was never a slow night, right? You is anywhere between twelve to fifteen miles of nonstop running or jogging, right? Uh, that being said, if the people that were in charge asked me to ever do anything for them again, I would totally do it because they were great people. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it was just too big of a foot layout. There was too much room, in my opinion, and I think that's why they moved it to a maze because there was so much room that was taken up by that. Right. Um, I'm not gonna sit here and say I didn't enjoy it, but man, there was many of a night, three o'clock in the morning, the park is already closed, but we can't we can't leave because there's people in line. Right. So there was three o'clock in the morning, I there was many of a night, I go to the back lot, I throw my gear down and I was tired, I was drenched. I smelled horrible. I mean, it was just, it was nonstop you know and but they knew that right they knew that you know the second year was a little bit easier because they broke it up but the first year was really hard exactly yeah we were, we were, we were handed scripts i'm like wait 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 there's a script to this <laughs> you're, like, but it was just, you're like i was just gonna wing it <laughs> well they eventually did they go you know just stay within the script say what you want but you've got to get these people through because at that time there was, I don't think, was there an annual pass at that point, Ed, that year? Uh, yeah, I want to say they had them. I don't know what exact year they started doing them, but uh, while you're talking, I can look it up because now you got me wondering. Yeah, sure. but I want to say that because I, I would sometimes be walking out by the front when they opened the park and every single person was, it was a mad dash run to infected to get the uh, reservation cards right. that they, they were giving out. But there were, you know, we would see the same people. So I was like, you know, I tried to do the math in my head one night. I go, okay, so on a busy night, we got 30,000 people here. Wow. On average, maybe 2,500 could do that experience. Yeah. And I, again, I think that's why they did what they did because they realized a lot of people can't get, can't do this. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's less than 10%. So I think that's why they did it the way they did it as well. You know, I think it was a, a, a I think it was really cool that they tried it. Right. Um, if you, if you ever got to experience it, it was great. You know, I didn't hear a lot of complaints. Now, I had people complain because I wouldn't allow them to shoot zombies sometimes, and it affected their score. <laughs> I literally had, I had a lady that was in a little uh, wheelchair. Not a wheelchair, but one of those little motorized uh, go-karts. Right. And she had a gun, and we would have to stop them at a certain section to let the party in front go. And I noticed that when she would go through, she would literally just drive off, and she would start shooting the zombies – but she wasn't part of that group. <laughs> so she was actually padding her stats. So, you know, I, I told the guy I was working with, I go, you know what? Screw this lady. I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> and she like, she got in my group that happened to get in my group that night. And she, I go, whoa, 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 stop, stop. You cannot go over there. She goes, well, the other ones let me, I go, you cannot go over there. She went and complained. 
You got to play by the rules. It's that simple. Like she went and complained yeah. and guest services and, and said that, that I, I was not li- allowing her to experience the full handle of it. And they, you know, came and talked to me about it and, they're like, okay, we, we kind of know what's going on here now. It's not like you have to pay extra for that. So what's the big deal? Yeah, you just play by the rules. I mean, yeah, that yeah. I mean, it's just simple. Follow the rules, play the game. You'll have an, a good time. It's that simple. Like, oh, it was great. Yeah, you're asking. I mean, yeah. You're asking. <laughs> you know, but, lot, you know, but, but yeah. Then after yeah. after two years, after two years, uh, I wanted to go back to Ghost Town really, really bad, and. Uh, uh, the person that was in charge was like, yeah, you know, just make sure you pass your audition, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay. So I had a whole idea for a character. I was all ready to go. And I was actually told, you know, I know you have this idea for this character. You might want to squash that. And I go, okay, well, what's going on? He goes, well, I'm still working on some stuff. I go, you know, and then it, it dawned on me. I go, you know, I would, I always wanted to be one of the pig twins. <laughs> uh, I go, what do you think is, I go, why don't you let me, and there was another girl that had been the pig for a couple of years ago. Why don't you let me and her do the pigs? Let me dress like a pig. And, and they're like, nah, we're actually not going to bring the pigs back. We don't think. Oof. And I'm like, okay, well, there went that idea. And then about a week before the auditions came, He's like, if you don't pass this audition, you're not coming back to Ghost Town, but this is what we're going to do. We're going to dress two guys as pigs. But we want you, I'm just letting you know now, that is the only way you're coming back to Ghost Town is to pass that audition. Damn. And I'm like, okay. You know, went in, did what I was supposed to do. I mean, I, I you know, I know certain people are like, yeah, dude, they had this audition, like five or six different things. Well, dude, they do that with everybody. Right. Everybody auditions different things. It's not they're picking on one person. They legitimately had me in that particular instance. I had to play a farmer hick zombie guy selling whiskey. Nice. And then they said, okay, now we want to see you do a pig. And I just did what I was supposed to do. And they go, okay. They go, okay, well, yeah, you got it. Go down and, uh, you know check out your suit, you know, and I actually spoke with that gentleman, Mike, who was the original beast when I was the pig twin. He goes, you know, you've had it pretty easy here. And I go, what do you mean by that? And he's like, you've had two iconic roles in ghost town. He goes, you you had mine and now you're a pig twin. And he goes, and you're a sliding pig twin at that. (laughs) He goes, I I don't think I, he goes, I've never seen that in my lifetime. I'm like, (laughs) Well, that was kind of an accident. I didn't really mean for that to happen. It just kind of happened. Hey, man. I, I mean, I, I could I could say firsthand. Me and Sammy, we spent endless nights, and it, you you may have seen us. You may oh. have. Um, <laughs> we were just sitting there watching everyone work, and I could say between uh, you and Ed, I mean, as your characters, I I, I think we were just. <laughs> sitting by that at that bench by the museum at the Kmart alley we call it that really dark area i, I know what you're talking by the general that store that was that yeah, was yeah, we yeah. owned that bench man that was like yeah. that was like we we like at that point we we're like can we just like sleep here and then like stay the night and then like don't have to wake up you know until haunt starts again like you know it's just better than going home at this point uh we're gonna come back tomorrow anyway um but that was not our original bench we actually the original one when we first went like in the beginning was actually in the middle, really smack in the middle, right in front of ghost town grub. Um, the bench that like faces like in a curve that like points down the, to fog alley. That was the original bench. And then on pack nights, it just was getting too packed there. So we're like, let's go find somewhere else where like we can be out of the way. We won't get hit by people and we can enjoy everything. And that's when we found the one in, in Kmart. And I was like, this is perfect. Like it's out of the way. It's in the corner. Uh, and it has that like light coming down. So people can't see us. But we could see everyone getting scared, which I thought was hilarious. Um, <laughs> and and the funny thing about it too was uh, every and, and every night we saw Ed, <laughs> he would always and, and me and Sammy called this the finger of respect. It was always like that, and then he'd walk away, and I was just like, "Yep, there, there's the respect right there." Like like shame on you. <laughs> I'm gonna go That's away. what I really meant right there. There it is. Yeah. He, like, he knows us. He respects us here now. He's, he's like, like, nah. He's like, nah, dude. Guys. Get out of here. I've seen you too much. <laughs> you guys. I've been seven lives. You've been here every time I've gone around. <laughs> Leave. <laughs> 
I think the funniest too was uh one night Ed saw that I was wearing a a vest. I I love my vest. I I love patches. And he just comes up to me and goes patches, and then walked away. And I was like, oh okay. Did I? Yeah. I believe you. <laughs> it was it was great. <laughs> I was like, I, I'll take it. I mean, he he likes patches, so. <laughs> Yeah, it was a great moment for us. It was, it was well, that, that, that's, okay. a good, that's, that's, a, that's like really a good area for you guys to sit in too, because you guys actually do get to see a lot of the different characters as well. Yeah, because pretty much everybody uses that to walk around, and you can kind of see, you know, like I've I've always been the person that's I like to see everybody kind of sort of represented. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's there's some there is some phenomenal talent in Ghost Town. And you should really try to get some of these people on your podcast. Some guys like Morty, Chopper, right. Virus, Forks. I mean, there is some really great talent. Sledge is another one um, that you know, I, I, I don't know what it is, but they just they, they just get overlooked. Yeah. You know, and a lot of them have been in that zone for over 10 years. Right. Yeah, and, this would have been my uh, uh, 15th as well in that zone so because I, I was in carnival for two years prior to that so you know I would have we all did our time time. but uh i think i did eight years in mazes i know back then there was a an unspoken five-year rule right. which basically meant that you need to work five years in a maze before you go to a street zone which which i it's guess so weird, which is so weird because like somebody like chopper or lucifer yeah Never worked a day in their life in a maze. Chopper has never worked a day in a maze. Right. He's been in Ghost Town from day one. Wow. And how many years has he been in Ghost Town now, dude? Uh, over, over. Uh, I know over twenty. Over twenty. It would have been his twenty-first or something like that. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I've say, heard people nail auditions yeah. and just go straight to streets like. I'm I'm impressed by that sometimes. But the, but but when he did it, it was in the early ninety. It was in the late nineties. Right. It was yeah, around the same time I, mean, I did. Same kind yeah, of audition. It, it Everybody had to audition. It didn't matter what what you got. If you audition and they if they thought you sucked that bad, you go to line control, or you become a blackout, or you go to streets, or you go to a maze, right. and then they pick initially what happens. So it's kind of a trip. Yeah. It was different. I I, I get, it's interesting too. I always hear stories. It's just changed so much over the years. I mean. From when it like, happened back in the '90s all the way till today, it's just it's a whole different yeah. whole process. I guess it's just all new people coming in and out uh, who, who do the casting or, or the creative. Well, there's just there's not as many there's not as many quote unquote people like Ed Chopper, myself, right. Sledge, where they know you're going to come back every year. Right. They know you'll you'll make it happen, and you're you're going to be there unless something really catastrophic happens. Like I remember there was an, I'm not going to say who, but there was an individual that texted me. Ghost town had a huge turn the last year. We actually had more than half were first year people. Right. That's unheard of, unheard of. And uh, the person texted me and was like, is it just me or do we have a lot of new people? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, we have a lot of new people. And he's like, wow. He goes, uh, you know, I remember when you got here, you didn't leave. Right. You literally were here for at minimal five to 10 years and then you left. But now we have people that come for a, a year, maybe two, and they're gone. Right. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, wow, dude, that was okay. You know, we actually have like a Facebook group that if you work Ghost Town, you're in that group for life. Mm -hmm. And it's grown, Asper. It's just grown because there was a time Ghost Town had what? It had 120 talent, and yeah, now we now on too. average now on average we have about 80 to 85. Right. So we don't have as much talent as we used to, but it's just kind of surreal because you know I I actually am in charge of I should I don't want to say the word in charge, but I I help moderate the current Ghost Town page. So I see all the new people that are being added. I mean, it, for me, it was like, wow, dude, we got so many new people this year. It's like, that's incredible to me. I mean, I remember when Ghost Town, if it had more than 15 new people, you were like, oh my gosh, there's a mass exodus of people. Right. And now it's, it, it changes. It really does. You know? There's been so many new people a few years too, that that means that many more people 
they would they would question their abilities out there you know because they never worked at a maze or whatever they came off the street and so you know we a few of us would you know take them under their wing our wing right. but uh there's a lot more of that when you have a lot of new people as well a lot more questions right but they, they get into the groove by the end of the run yeah 99 percent of them do i guess uh, but uh yeah you know, it's funny that uh, Jeremy brought up a, a good point earlier. Was uh, you know a lot of people that I need to get on the show, and and I and that's the that's the goal, man. I, I think when we started this whole like interviewing the characters, obviously the big inspiration from that when I when I went to his panel at Honex was a uh, was Ted. Uh, Ted used to do it back in the day, and mm -hmm. uh, I, what I want to do now is um, not exactly copy him, but do it my own style. And uh, carry on the legacy of, of doing that because there's a lot, like you said, there's a lot of talent out there that I think even behind the scenes people are interested in hearing. Um, and I, I really love hearing the stories. I love uh, expanding the knowledge of of learning different things. And uh, you know, Ted did it amazing when he did it back in the day um, with his interviews. And and when I heard that story, I was like, man, like I, it feels cool knowing that. In a way, we're kind of carrying on that legacy, but we're doing it kind of our own way at the same time. Um, and, and that's why I like talking to people like you guys because we get to, like I said, hear more of just the history of this event and and how it's changed so much over the years. And I, yeah. I, I, the, I think the goal – I mean I think 2019 when we, when we first started this, I think we had just about almost like half or maybe over half of Ghost Town on the show. And, you know, I, I, I just I, – after – after those podcasts were done, I was like, okay, what can we do to get the other half? Like, I want to keep going. I want more. Like, I want yeah. I want people to know these people outside of the kids. I don't think a lot of people realize you guys are all human outside of this. You know what I mean? Like, and, and honestly, like Jeremy was talking to you about the history from his time. I'm, we're willing to talk to you about that kind of stuff. I, I don't mind at all. That's why I was totally okay with coming onto this thing right. with you guys. I'll – you know, Speaking I got stories too. We all we we all have stories, man. Speaking of the history, dude, I want to know uh, how did the the rattlesnake character come to life, man? I, I love this character. Uh, well, uh, I want to say back in uh, I'll, I'll I'll go back to 06 really quick because it leads up to the the kind of funny thing about how we got it. Go ahead. I, I went to Ghost Town in 2006, and and I had this kind of cheesy looking mask with these big buggy eyes that I bought myself and I got approved right. and it was all right, but, and I was feeling it and I was, it was fun. And I decided to go to uh, the spirit Halloween store that year and buy a pumpkin face mask, which if you remember the pumpkin faces, <coughs> suckers, they were really evil looking right? with the gold eyes. I bought that pumpkin and uh, I wore it out Halloween night. And my coworker said, oh, dude, you got it. Like even Beast told me, he goes, you need to wear that piece next year, like the whole run. And I go, you know, this is kind of badass. And it's easy because I don't, it's, you know, can't, you can't see my eyes. So I just hit, I just put it on and it was easy to take off. So I wore it the next year and I was, I was, I was happy. I was, I was like, dude, this is badass. I'm a pumpkin. This is cool. So OA comes around and uh, uh, Craig stops me. Craig was the big guy. He was the haunt father back in the day. Right. He goes, uh, I just want to let you know uh, that I, I nominated you for, uh, for makeup. And, you know, if, if you don't ask and whine like some people do and they just give you makeup, it's kind of a big deal. Right. But there's some people that kind of take that for granted that don't understand. But when you've been doing it so long and they come to you and they say, you are makeup. That's, that's like getting a raise at your day job. You didn't you have to ask for it. Right. You know, if that makes sense. No, yeah, it's a weird definitely. So, so he tells me I, I nominate, nominate you for makeup. And I looked at him with a blank stare and he goes, you know, if this is too much pressure, you know, let me know. I go, no, 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 I'm good. I'm good. I'm totally cool with that. Right. So that was when I went and I met Denise. She was, she was in charge of makeup at the time. Right. So uh, I'm standing outside the warehouse and she puts this like naked, piece on me that's not painted and i don't know what the hell it is and she's putting up to my face and she puts the chin up and i'm just standing there and like okay you know and so she puts it down she goes all right we're good we got our snake have a good day and i go you too and as i walked off i go wait a minute i'm a snake <laughs> go, oh, and white snake was played right in his head at that particular <laughs> moment stop interrupting mr trump 
Dude, you just labeled me, bro. Yeah, I did label you as an interrupter. <laughs> so, uh, I guess, I guess, yeah, fake. <laughs> in the next <laughs> week or so, I didn't know what the hell I was going to do. So, um, I was at Target buying some some stuff like you do when you go to the store, and I walked by the barbecue section, and I saw this really uh, cool uh, snake light that you put in a barbecue right. that works like a magnet, and you hold the handle, and the snake was uh, about four feet long and had a light at the end of it. So I go, you know, maybe on my boring nights, I'll use that, and I'll call it my snake light, which I did because it, that was back when you could, you know, do more stuff. Right. So anyway, I happened to go to a museum in, uh, in in LA. I think it was like Body World or something like that. And it was in the uh, the Natural History Museum, okay. I want to say. And I saw this the, all these uh, little animal plushie toys in the gift shop. And I saw this big uh, six-foot rubber snake. And I thought, holy crap, I'm going to buy that. And then I'm going to buy a rattle. And my coworker at the time, I guess, just had a newborn. Well, his newborn had grown up already. Right. But I asked, hey, do you happen to have a rattle still for your babies when they were babies? And he goes, yeah, let me go home and check. So I go to work the next day, and, and I see this big old blue rattle on my desk. And uh, I pick it up, and I shake it, and it's loud as hell. And I go, Fuck yeah! I'm gonna paint this black. It's it's on, and I still have that same rattle, same exact rattle. Is that the one that you used in 2019? Yes, that iconic. Same, same, same rattle, iconic. same rattle, same snake. I don't use the snake light anymore because it's it's actually kind of dumb. But it was funny when on a boring night I put the snake light on the ground and I put scare cloth on the end, and it freaked people out. But it was mainly for my own entertainment. That's that's what you do sometimes. But I love it. You know, you can't do that nowadays. But that's that's what happened, dude. And, and I th thought it was so odd because the snake hadn't had been used since like 01 or 02. So right. there hadn't been a snake in a while. <laughs> and I've been doing it ever since consecutively. It's kind of crazy. That's, that's, that's crazy that I just sat in the makeup chair. And next thing you know, the legend was born. The icon. Um, Sting. If, if you want to call it that, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> What uh, Jeremy shared what inspired him. Like around the age of four, he knew he wanted to do scare acting. What when, about when did you decide that scare acting was a well, a path you'd like to take? I will give uh, Jeremy more credit on this one because it didn't happen to me. I mean, I knew I wanted to, but he actually got to be a, a fan for many years before I did. Right. He's got a lot of cool pictures that go back to Ghost Town to at least the early two thousands, right? Yeah. If you go, if you go to my Facebook, yeah. I actually have. Yeah, like like uh, there's a you guys might have you, you guys might know Spats. Yeah, Paul. Yeah. I actually have a picture of him in his very first night in Ghost Town. Yeah, and oh, I wow. had no idea that was him. You would never know in a million years. And uh, Cowboy Bobby actually was looking at my Facebook photos, and he he messaged or he put a comment and go, dude, that's Paul's first night in Ghost Town. And it's not the Spawn character. It's not the Spats character. It's just him in a really crappy Knots mask yeah. that you had no idea. And Paul goes, holy cow. I never thought so. And that was the thing, like, like I was telling you guys before. Nobody actually took pictures inside when they walked around. And I would actually go, I'd get the, I, I would get the, the, the prints developed. And then I would actually scan them and I would send them to Ted. Nice. And Ted would actually post them on ultimatehot.com. So there's actually, I don't know if they're still there. I don't think they are, but there was actual photos of me like 20 years ago as a guest with like different monsters. Nice. And yeah. a lot of the monsters, I, I actually just said, you know, screw this. I'm going to put them on my Facebook. And a lot of monsters have gone back and looked at my Facebook and went, holy cow. <laughs> Somebody actually got photos of that. Yep. I mean, he because he didn't have any photos with me like he should have, but he, you know, whatever. I didn't know him back then. So <laughs> unless he got yeah. a picture with the scream guy and I, I wouldn't have known that was me. So, but anyway, so like I said, he, he got the opportunity to be a fan. I mean, I only, I went once in like maybe 1981, 82, I was in junior high. Right. So, you know, back then when you're young, you get the shit scared out of you. It's oh, different. Yeah. 
but it, it was vastly different. My first year ever going to the event was 1986. Yeah. And it was a whopping nine nights. Yeah. Right. And my, I think I was 11 then. But my parents were dead set. You are not going to not scary farm. I was begging when I was in kindergarten. It's too scary. You're not gonna. You're not gonna be able to deal with it. I'm like, no, I want to go. I want to go. Yeah. And I, I've always been into horror, so it didn't really. I didn't see the big difference. I mean, I grew up with Jaws. I mean, I was like, no, dude, I'm into this stuff. Uh, I, I, that's what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. So Ed's right. You know, yeah. for me, like I, I will share like a like a like for me being a fan i never saw people outside of their makeup before right so when i crossed over and i started to work the event the first year i worked was a log ride and i'm sitting in the back lot and it was legitimately probably one of the only time i fanboyed it i was sitting there and i look over and i see this big guy sitting on on a hot box and his eyes are all blacked out. He's got like raccoon eyes. I'm like just looking at him. Then he goes over and picks up this black werewolf mask. And I go, that's Lucifer. <laughs> so that's what he looks like without the mask on. <laughs> that was like like legitimately. And the only other time I kind of sort of fanboyed it, being a fan growing up, was uh, when Jeff Starr came back in 2013. Right. And I was in Ghost Town. And they were like, yeah. And Jeff was living in Australia at the time. Wow. And they were like, yeah, Jeff's coming back and he's going to work hot. I legitimately st stayed back while they were walking us through the mazes just to hang out with him, just to get to know him. <laughs> and now me and Jeff talk at least twice a week. And we're all about craft beers together. He's like one of my best friends. Right. You know, I mean, he's moved on now. He's got two kids, got a wonderful wife. And me and Ed, I mean, me and Ed were able to go out and have beers with him, what, like three or four months ago? Yeah, sure. I, I don't even know times anymore, but yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, we actually met up. That's the first time I've seen we, him in a year because he's got to the logic, yeah. You know, but like that for a fan coming over and working it and then seeing people that you, I don't want to say admired, but you were just like, dude, that is like the coolest character I've ever seen. Right. Yeah. You know? And now you're like sitting with them having a beer. No, yeah. you see, I, I I didn't get to figure that out until I started working the event because, like he said, he he got to you know be the fan. Right. Now it it didn't happen until 1992 when I was working at the Buena Park Mall. I was a long hair, you know, whatever at the time, and I had a roommate. I was living in Westminster. I had a roommate at the time that I want to say worked uh, Revenge of the Dead, the one that was underneath uh, Gasoline Alley. I don't. Yeah, it was by the uh, soapbox racers. Yep, yep. And so uh, me and a, like a group of ten people, we all went to haunt, dude. And it was one of the best times, dude, that I've ever had a haunt. Right. You know, ever because when you go with a big group like that and you want to get the shit scared out of you, and and I did a few times, and, and I ran into my roommate in the maze, and and he, and he saw me, he's like, Eddie, and he gave me a hug, which is I guess you're not supposed to do, but that was 1992, <laughs> so. So anyway, you know, after that, I, I, I couldn't, I, I wanted to work on after 92. I, I, just, I couldn't because I was a, uh, working at a, at a shoe store. I became a manager. I had to work nights. I had to work weekends. It was bullshit. Retail is bullshit. If I anyone agree. knows that. I agree. So, <laughs> no, I've worked retail. I agree. I, I couldn't exactly say, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work days and I'm going to work this uh, event at nights because I, I would have lost money. So it, it wouldn't have been worth it to me at the time. Right. But uh, lucky for me. In 95, I lost that job, but that was the best thing that ever happened to me. So I eventually got the job where I still am today at, at the print shop. And I thought in, in, in 95, should I take time off and maybe apply? But I said, you know what? I'm the new guy still. So I'll just wait till the, till the next year rolls around. And then here comes 1996. And I was talking to a coworker of mine in the shipping department. And he goes, dude, if you want to work the event so bad, why don't you just call in sick and apply? And I go, shit, that's a good idea. <laughs> so what I did was I called in sick. I drove to Knott's, got there at like 10 a.m. when the little trailer opened up in the front employment center. Yep. And I turned in my application. 
and they ran a few things and they said, okay, you're good. So come back at four o'clock for auditions. And they go, okay. And then I go, auditions? Because th th that was back when they auditioned everybody. Right. It didn't matter. But you see, in my opinion, they should have never taken away those auditions because you see what those auditions are is you're in a theater with, with all these lights on you, but you know that all the people in the audience are not the judges. They're your, uh, your peers. Right. If they're all the, in, in there for the same reason you are. The judges are off on the wings and on the left and the right. You can't see them. Mm -hmm. So they basically make you do the same stupid thing like Jeremy had to do. Like for me, uh, I had to act like this funky Wolfman guy behind me giving a presidential speech. Okay. <laughs> so I did that. And, uh, uh, and then they said, okay, and say your name in that voice, which I thought it was a wolf. He was some hairy looking dude, kind of like what I look like now, but uh, uglier, maybe not as good looking. <laughs> Ed Cobb's so, very good looking, man. Come on. And, and, and then, and then right before, and, 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 and by the way, just so you know, I was the last group out of, maybe 15 groups to go up because you had to go up 10 at a time right so they get to me and right before they say do your best scare channel 4 news comes in oh. <laughs> so i'm doing this like over the top scare because because i figure you know what i don't know shit what i'm doing but all i'm gonna do is i'm gonna be a jackass for three minutes and whatever happens happens so i do uh, my scare thing and here's the, the camera and and then we're done so I go, okay, sweet. And we leave. And then I find out I'm going to go in this uh, new maze called the underground, which that was basically a sequel of a maze back in the day called industrial evil. Okay. Which yeah. Played a lot of metal and, and industrial shit. And it was cool. I like it. But I didn't know what to expect, but I go, okay, that's cool. So uh, I went about my way and I went home and made dinner, whatever, like you do. And I go to work the next day. And uh, one of the drivers stops me and goes, dude, I saw you on TV this morning. <laughs> and I go, oh, shit, I hope Lisa didn't see that because I called in sick yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, uh, so, so I, I get to Nas, you know, we do the whole orientation that we do. And uh, the first day I go to the underground and I'm some, it's some like wasteland. It's like a predecessor of what uh, that, that, that one the John Cook maze. Uh, help me out here, Jeremy. Uh, the one that was the one with all the metal music that John Cook did. Are you talking about in games? He didn't do um, that. It was a predecessor kind of to that. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was dancing around to ministry and Metallica and Rob Zombie. And to yep, this day, when I hear, when I hear electric head part two, I will never stop thinking about haunt. That's what it does to you. So, so I get to haunt. And we have our little groups that that, that, that 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 we have to break each other. And I got stuck literally in the very first spot in the maze, which was kind of kind of funny to me. Right. But everybody in my group, they were they were they were all, they, they were deaf. They were deaf people. So every time they had to go on a break, they had to go do the sign of break, and I had to go up to them and do that too. So I thought that was kind of odd. So, you know, that year went pretty well for a rookie, I guess. I had I had a blast. I was a nerd after that for a lot. I'll, I'll say this uh, for eight months. I had, I always had a dream of going down this big, long hallway that was at least 20 feet long. Cause that's what was in the maze. Right. There was a, like a 20 foot hallway and uh, it was just <clears throat> all these lights and a couple of monsters running at you. I had a dream. I was walking down that freaking hallway for eight months, dude. That's how much of a nerd I was. You missed it, man. I mean, that, I think that's what, yeah. I mean, I, the first yeah. time I, ever attended scary farm was in 2008 mm -hmm. and, and i was there for about two hours i was like in the fifth grade and then i left <laughs> I, I couldn't it leave. gets you man yeah and then and, uh, it was redemption time 2011 went to horror nights then 2012 mm -hmm. it was like i want to do both i want to go back to scary farm i got to yeah. be my scary farm and i think from 2012 that's when i started going every year consistently and i just fell in love with that place and then 2019 i think was probably hands down my favorite year of ever going to the event because that was the year we got the season pass which i have to say that is such a bargain right there way worth it it is like 70 bucks and then we added the the parking which was an extra 25 and it came out to like 90 bucks but in the end of the day you you get your money's worth i mean parking itself is like what 20 bucks usually too and you know just going to the event 
like if you were to go every night, you know, I mean, that's like almost about 40 to 60 bucks a night, depending on what night you go. So it, it, it's kind of weird because we there's like I know you guys have walked by it. I, I don't remember seeing you guys there, but those people that like hang out by the gun shop. Right, the porch. Yeah. yeah. The porch. Yeah. The same people are there every night. You yeah. know, and you kinda like walk by and you kinda feel like you're going to work, you know, you're like walking by, hey guys, as you <laughs> like go and do your thing, you know, and you know, every once in a while, like I'll get some I get somebody like, dude, that's a dude. That's a guy, yo. You know, like cause I don't look like a guy. I look like a total chick. But <laughs> For us, it's kind of surreal because we see the same people in the same spots. Right. And you're like, okay, that's their spot. Okay, that's their spot. And you just kind of know where the regulars hang out. Yeah. And it, you know, and like I, I have friends that are like, oh yeah, we hang out, we hang out in Carnival. That's that's uh, that's our spot. We hang out in Carnival. Oh, we hang out in camp. We hang out over there all night. You know, and you're like, wow, dude. Oh yeah, you know, then it, it becomes like a bragging rights thing. Like, yeah, they're there twenty four nights. I was here every night for hunt. I, I got here every night. And you're uh, like, wow. That's why it's nice to work in a maze because you don't see all those same people all the time. Right. Because they, they they can't stop in a maze and just like watch you. Right. Because then it looks stocky, by the way, right? But yeah, they can't do that in a maze. They just they have to keep going. There's nothing worse than when you're working and somebody stops and goes, "Hey, can I get a picture with you?" Yeah. And we're not obviously we're not allowed to do that now. There used to be a point that you could, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, and for us, it's it's kind of surreal, especially for the older people, because there was certain monsters that's all they were known for. Right. All they wanted to do was take pictures with guests all the time, and they also had people follow them with videos all the time. Like, yeah, that's like uh, five minute videos. I, I and I probably know how you guys feel about this, but I I personally don't like it. When you have the one teenager there that's on a Saturday night, he's got his phone out with the flash on, and oh, I hate those dude. so much. That's why, like, when I would film at the event, I would be off to the side. I'm like, I'm not going to get in their way. They're doing their job. Like, I can film from a distance. My camera's got a zoom function. Like, it's, you Especially know. when it's dark out, and then they stick the thing in, in your face like that. Like, yeah. see my thumb? That's how close they are. And I <laughs> and when, when, when we were trying to film, it was it was a matter of staying out of the way, but also staying, like, an area where no one can see me because one, I didn't want to ruin any scares for anyone that was trying to get them. And, and two, like I said, my camera's got a zoom function. So it's like, I can get it from far away. If I'm like in a blacked out corner, kind of crouched and trying to get my shot while the other person's on the other side, getting the scare, like I'm fine. Like, and honestly I had the entire event to get footage. So like, I wasn't like, Hey, I need to get this footage. Like do, do a scare. Like, no, it's like, if I caught it, I caught it. If I didn't, well, my brain caught it and I'll remember that forever. So well, I mean, primarily, you pretty much know where people are going to be like that. Fog Alley is notorious for that. Right. If you're going to walk through Fog Alley, you know there's going to be cameras. You know there's going to be lights. Right. I can go over by Ghost Rider and do my thing over, and there's hardly any of that. Right. Uh, it's primarily, I'd say 90% of the time, it's usually people that are afraid. Yeah. They're scared. Little do they know, this is for all you people that do that. When you do that and you walk through fog, it reflects the light back at you. It's like putting your brights on in a car. Yep. Yes. So it's really not helping you. Picture. So don't do that yeah. because yeah. it's actually hindering you more than it's helping you. Yeah. But people don't know that. They think that if they put the light on and walk through the fog, they will see you coming. Plus and by the way, someone yell at you. We, we, we deal with that on a nightly basis legitimately a minute basis right. so when we see your light we, we we see you before you see us yeah so if you're trying to quote unquote see us it's not going to happen we've already know that you're coming because we can see your light coming before you come yeah. so we, we we can go and hide off to the side yeah. we can stand off to the side mm -hmm. and we're just going to wait for you to come by and then drill you Boom. Some people also uh, um, wear, uh, obviously, you've seen a lot of people wear contacts. Right. Uh, some of them wear those, uh, like the scleras and different kind of contacts. That when you shine a light on them, it, it jacks them up. Yeah. It jacks up their eyesight, and it makes it worse. Um, and there's just a lot of reasons why you shouldn't even do that. It's just so yeah. stupid. It is. It really it bothers me as a, as a person. Like, uh, I think one night we had a kid. I love telling this story too. We had a kid come through who was trying to act all tough in front of the monsters. And he was like, ah, you can't touch me. You can't do this. And then like, I came out of nowhere because this kid was bothering me too. And I'm like, 
yeah, but I can. And he looked at me and like, he just ran away. Cause I was like, I wasn't a monster. You know, I was like, dude, just, yeah. leave the, look, they're fucking working. Leave them alone, dude. They're, they're, yeah. they're... I, I would say nine times out of, out of 10, when somebody does that, we just keep walking anyway. Yeah. I love it when, when guests annoy guests, I think it's great. It, it's that you would love being around me. Cause that's all. It was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was getting oh, it, it, it used to right. be, it used to be a lot of fun, like walking by the gut shop because people would have their flashlights on whatever and every single person on the little porch are, turn your light off <laughs> i mean they were screaming it at people and honestly i don't even pay attention to it i it, it's it, it's no different than me seeing somebody walk down the same spot it's just everyday life when you're out there right. if that makes sense so you don't even i honestly i don't even notice the light half the time and i don't care to notice it, it doesn't bother me like I said, you know, I'm in a big, I, I'm, I, I mm -hmm. like to refer to my costume as a battleship because it's so damn big. <laughs> and I literally, I, you know, a lot of monsters will tell you, I got punched. I got hit. I got this. I got that. In all the years I've worked haunt, you know how many times I've been hit? How many times? Zero. Damn. I only, got, I only on got clocked once really, really good, and I got a fat lip when I was a, a scream guy in Horrorwood Hotel back See? in 2001. And See? that was beginning, beginning of the night, and I got him kicked out like around 7.20 at night. And that was cool, but it wasn't him that pissed me off. Uh, it was his buddy. that pissed, I was sitting in my chair, and I lunged at him, and he just like pulled back and clocked me like really good. And it was not a reaction. You can tell he actually pulled back. You don't pull back when you're clocking someone and that's not a reaction. Yeah. So when I took my, when my mask fell off my face, I started yelling at the guy and his buddy got in my face and he was the dick. So I followed him all the way till I found a black guy and I go get that guy. So it just so happens that there were actually one part PD outside of the dance hall. And I told him everything that happened. He looked at my face and I, I guess I had this crazy fat lip and he goes, um, you know, do you want him kicked out? And I go, you know, I don't want to deal with the paperwork, but just, just, and he goes, I'll tell you what, I'll run him for words and I'll scare him a bit. Is that cool? And I go, yeah, it's totally cool. And then he ended up kicking him out anyway. <laughs> to me, that's comical because I've seen people get kicked out and their friends get pissed at them because they go, you asshole, why'd you get us kicked out? Yeah. To me, that's, that's you know, if you're going to be a jackass, just that's what you get. I've always, I've always been under the impression that if you get hit or whatnot on a constant level, right. I'm not talking like something like you get hit like two or three times a year, right. but I'm talking, you get hit every like single night. night. You're doing something wrong. Yeah. I've worked you, with need those. To, you need to reevaluate what you are doing with the public because I, I you know, uh, I have a true story about that, and I think I've told you, Jeremy. I'm not going to say this individual's name. You don't know who it is. But my first year in Ghost Town, I got I got pulled aside by someone, and she go and and I guess she had an altercation with some people. So we were standing by the candy shop, and so I got pulled in with them and and the and the yellow shirt guys in the break room behind the candy shop, and she explained what happened. Da 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 da, da. and and I guess I saw. I didn't see, but whatever. I kept going. I'm the rookie. I don't know what to do. Right. So the yellow shirts go, okay, we'll be right back. We'll, we'll get some paperwork. And then this chick proceeds to look at me and goes, okay, this is what happened. You turned around and you saw me get hit and da 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 da. And I'm thinking, what? <laughs> so that happens, dude. And, and, and I'll call it a crying wolf. A lot of people like to cry wolf, if you know what I mean. Right. Because honestly, if someone just comes up with you, there's some people that if they come up and press you by the side like that, they freak out and like, oh my God, he hit me, get him kicked out. And there's so many of that going on. And I kind of think that it might bug security, but I'm not trying to side with, 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 with anyone on this. I'm just saying that if you're going to cry wolf every day like that, that might say something about your judgment and all that shit, you know? Right. And by, and by the way, if you're a general, another little uh, PSA for people that are, go that are guests, do you really want to touch a sweaty monster that's been working for five or six hours? Yeah. Do you really, I, you know, cause I'm like, you don't feel free to touch me. Yeah. Feel free. Cause you're going to get nothing but sweat yeah. on your hand. My wig is destroyed. Oh. I am drenched. <laughs> 
if you're gonna be that stupid, I will tell you, we know Lost Boy, Jeremy. Yeah. He used to uh, uh, get scare cloth and, and get it wet on the ground with muddy, yucky wetness. Right. And he would hold it up and he would tell people to lick it. Oh. Dude, people licked it. My friend Noah got a, a half-eaten chicken thigh out of the trash can and took it out and had someone take a bite of it. People are stupid. So those are the funny stories that were that, that I was going to tell you or shit like that. I mean – Anything that a monster tells them to do. It's I've actually – we experienced that firsthand this year uh, with Virus, actually, and I think it was him and Merrick, or it might might have been one of the pig twins. Um, it might have been John. I, I – well, I, I, play with, I play with Virus, too, so it might have been me. It, it, yeah, I don't know if it was you or the other one, but basically these two girls, they, they went into this, like, little, like, cattle right in front of the barn. By our yep, bench. that was me. That was me. Yeah, that was me. That the was, and they can, and they, and the the stupidest part is, like they would not leave, and yep. they were there. I think you guys were there for a good twenty minutes messing with them, and me. Yeah, and Sammy we just kept sitting, pushing them back. Yeah, they would try to get out, and then I like, know get back in, and me and Sammy were just there dying. Okay, okay. Since we're telling funny things like that, this individual that told me, okay, this is what happened. You the, in my first year, right. Okay, I was. It was a slow night. I go into into Boot Hill. You know when you go in the graveyard, you make a right, and there's the uh, the graveyard that's got the, the fence around it. Right. The, the, the gate, wrought iron fence. Yeah. I was bored one night, and I told a couple of people to get in it, and I told them that there were scales in it, and it's going to weigh you, and if you get we get enough people in this tonight, uh, there'll be a light show. <laughs> I don't know how I thought of it, but I was bored. <laughs> so eventually, throughout the night, I got. Uh, 11 or 12 people inside that wrought iron fence thing. Right. I don't know how, but they were stupid. And I said, okay, hold on. And, and I ran and I went in the um, the barn, uh, not, not the barn, that, that that cart and just hung out by the cart right. and just watched them wait. And they were sitting there waiting for something to happen and for like a couple minutes and then and, and 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 they finally figured out okay this is stupid let's get out like, see on, it was, it, it was probably before you guys this time we used to do uh the remember ed we used to do the the fake maze i heard i've heard VIP stories mazes? About those. yeah we would tell what, i know you've seen the lumberjack maze i know you've yeah. seen anthony sammy you've seen the lumberjack maze right is that the one on youtube it's on my YouTube. It's called Lumberjack Maze back in 2008. I think I've seen that one. That, yeah, was, when, seen, yeah. uh, uh, that was my first year as a snake. And one night I was a female snake. <laughs> I had a red dress. And it was Halloween night. And, 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 and I had the, my artist make me up as a, as a chick. So <laughs> you can't do that stuff now. But back then, I don't know what was going on through my mind. Why did I do this? The only reason I did that was because we had already done the lumberjack maze. Right. But we decided that on Halloween night, we're going to make the transvestite lumberjack maze. <laughs> so I said, okay, that's cool. Well, let me see if I can be a chick because I had a blonde wig from when I was a carnival. Right. So I showed up. I go, can you make me a chick? And she did. And I ended up looking like that female gremlin, you know, with the big lips. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you've seen that. I don't know. But yeah. So eventually, uh, Halfway through the night, when I knew it was supposed to begin, I go upstairs because I knew people, and I got a red dress, <laughs> and I and I walked through the park in that red dress, dressed as a chick, and we and we hung out in the maze, and it was pretty funny. It That's, was comical. I I you know what the VIP I I've heard that. so many different stories of, of the VIP mazes, uh, and some of them are really funny, and I'm just like, how on earth did you get away with this, like? No it, was, it was it was it was a different time, dude. Yeah. It was a different time. I mean, now I I don't blame Knots because we we live in a in a PC world, mm -hmm. and we have to abide by rules. And I 100% agree with with I would say 95% of what Knots has put into place. I agree with. That being said, I do miss Dusty Geezer dressing up as the Candy Corn Man. And racing through and watching him and Jeff Starr yep. dress like Elvis I, impersonators. I got to work with him and Jeff for a few years, man. It was great. Uh, awesome. But those times are done. And it's, I'm not saying it's not fun still because it is. It's just, it's different. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, my dad always says it, famous quote, everybody says it, uh, nothing lasts forever. 
everything changes for better or for worse. Yeah. Well, and I, I like to tell the younger kids that like start out like in ghost town because you got to realize there are a lot like you guys where you guys hear stories. You're like, dude, I would have loved to have seen that. You yeah. know, and a lot of kids really want to do that stuff. But then they like Ed had said originally earlier, it's a job. Yeah. And we have rules and you have to abide by those rules. And a lot of these kids come and they go, I'm not having any fun. I'm not. Da, 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 da. And you're like, dude, it's a job. Yeah. You know, how hard is it to not have fun doing that? Dude, I, 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 I see it every night. It's fun just being there as a guest, yet alone getting to dress up and, and getting paid to do that. Like what other job in the world lets you do that? You know, I know. it's like, there's very few haunts that come around and that will pay you to scare people. Like what other job lets you do that? Like that is like the coolest thing ever. Like if, I, if there was a way for people to do that full time, I think a lot of people would jump on that. Oh, mm-hmm. I, I, me and Ed know quite a few that would do it year round. There's right. no ifs, right. ands, or buts about it. You know, there's a lot of guys that are like, I'm an entertainer. This is what I do. Yeah. And I'm going to do it year round. And you're like, dude, it's February. You know, like me, I don't understand why people go to the park or the rink and slide in February. Right. I'm like, what are you doing? You, all you're doing really is destroying your gear. Yeah. Well, I got to stay in shape. In shape for what? You still got six or seven months, man. Get on the treadmill, run around the block. Yeah, go for a walk, you know? Like You know, but a lot of them are like, nah, you know, and every once in a while I'll see it on Facebook from certain people. They're like, hey, I'm going to the rink today, and I'm like, dude, it's March, bro. I think if I would ever go, it would just be to learn because I don't know how to do it, and I would like to learn how to do it, but I I don't even think I'd go to the rink. Okay, true story, true story. I have never – I took that – sliding test without ever sliding one day in my life really yes wow and i do it in a fat suit yeah no that's true and you're good at it too so for me and and, and that being said i don't do what decade brigade does i don't do tricks Uh, dude i'm a bowling ball yeah i got one thing i can do and that's (laughs) the only thing i can do that being said i've never hit anybody i've never done anything destructive I know what's within my limits, but then I see certain other people, man, that they've took that test three or four times and they can't pass it. Right. You know, and for me, it, it's like, I don't get it. I don't understand why you have to practice year round when I can go out there and I can practice for 15 minutes and I can pass a stupid thing. Yeah. I am, I am 46 years old now. I didn't start sliding until I was 43. Right. So for me, it's very difficult when people are like, yeah, dude, you got to stay in shape and you got to practice year round. You're for what? I don't get it. What are you, what are you practicing for? Exactly. That's just my opinion. I, you know, if they want to go out and do it, that's, that's their thing. I just want to see if I'd be able to do it. I broke an ankle like a year (laughs) or two ago, so I don't know how my limits are. Um, and I'm, I'm usually like just super, uh, cautious about everything I do, but I just want to see if I'd be able to do it. And even then, like the high school I work at, the the grounds in the hallways are like smooth, so it's like, just do it there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, now Knotts is again times change. Knotts right. has us actually have to pass a test every single year. And I'm, I, I you know I heard people, dude, I took that stupid test and passed it 15 years ago. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> just go and do, dude. If, if you know what you're doing, you shouldn't have a, have a worry. Right. I mean, the first two years I was terrified because they made me take the test in the stupid fat suit. Yeah. And that was, you know, that was kind of difficult, you know, but I got the hang of it and I'm like, okay, this is what I can do. And this is what I can't do. I mean, one, I can't use my hands. My hands are literally all they can become is a rudder. I cannot, cause I have big breaths <laughs> and my hands can't do anything. Yeah. Because those are in the way. So everything I do, it, it all comes from uh, leg propulsion. Right. So my, my legs are pretty dead by the end. Like this last year, last hour or two I work, I used to take my pads off because I was just like, dude, my knees are killing me. Right. You know, and I'd actually even said, you know, if we were going to come back last year, I was like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to slide anymore. I don't know. I'm really getting up there now. You know, it's not my knees feel fine. I don't, I'm not in any pain, but you know, all it takes is one bad trip. You know, I see a lot of older sliders. They walk bow-legged. Jeff, Jeff Starr is jacked up now. 
Alex Jeff Starr. I, I consider Jeff Starr probably one of the top three greatest yeah. sliders ever. He, he, he was crazy out there. And yeah, he, he was nuts. People and, like have inspired me to uh, not slide because I want to be able to walk when I'm 70. I always make that joke. Yeah. But, um, and I do low impact you know, slides. So my slides yeah. are very low impact. So I don't do what they did where Jeff would get a running start and jump five, eight feet sometimes in the air and land right on his knees. Yeah. I don't yeah. do that. I'm That's not the kind of, of that. sliding and I'm a fan of sliding and I love watching shit like that. I, it's just, like I said, I want to be able to walk when I'm that old guy. Right. Someday. So I'll watch it. I'll watch it endlessly, but yeah. So not for me. with that being said, uh, obviously, you know, 50th is, is coming near and I, I've heard a lot of people say they're just going to hang it up after the 50th. What about you guys? Is that, are you going to wait to the 50th? Or are you going to keep well, the <laughs> Go ahead with this one first, dude. Well, what, what I will tell you is there's a photo that uh, a certain group of us take every year. Right. And uh, two years ago, it started with this and not last oh, year, but the year, but the uh, 2019. It went to this, yeah. ah. and if we had worked this year, it would have went to this. Ah. Uh, I don't know exactly when that kind of started. I know a lot of people have said the same thing, but now, like me and him, we, we discuss it, and we're like, dude, we're getting up there now. I don't know if we can make it another three years. You know, but that's if 2022 it does come back. Yeah, it's even if it comes back this year. Right. Honestly, you know? common sense. I am not a source for anything, but if common sense will tell you anything, you can talk to people about it, and they're probably going to agree that it's probably not going to happen in 2022. Just a guess. Right. Do you and really it, think that rock concerts and stuff like that are going to come back in by October? No, I kind of doubt it at this point. I, I think we're we're gonna. It's gonna be a while till stuff comes like that. I even remember reading a thing, like mid pandemic, about Ticketmaster and and StubHub requiring either a COVID test or a vaccination just to attend a concert. So yeah, mm -hmm. and we and we don't know. Me and Ed are are also year round employees at Knott's Berry Farm. We right. work in the entertainment uh, department. We don't even know if Knott's is going to ask us to take that vaccination before we come back to work. Right. If we come back to work. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a lot of things that are up in the air and I don't think I, I get it. People are upset. People, I, I think if, and when it does come back, be it this year or the following year, or the following year, I think people are going to be so excited for normalcy again, there'll be a big celebration, but what really sucks yeah. is a lot, a, a lot of us are so much older we might not actually have be afforded the opportunity to come back and say, you know what? We just want to work at this one last year. Right. Because we don't know where, where we're going to be. I mean, that's, I don't that's think the sad part. I've never I don't even think, thought about that. And now I'm getting sad thinking about that. You Maybe. know, and, and that's the sad part is a yeah. lot of people, a lot of us are hoping, you know, like I, you know, I really want to have that one last run. Everybody wants that last run in life. Right. Everybody does. Totally. I totally get it. But, you know, for like me, it's like, dude, I, I don't think I can slide anymore. I, I don't want to destroy my body any more than I already have. Uh, I don't know if I can wear that fat suit anymore. You know, there's, you know, and it's not just me. I, I remember distinctly, I'm not going to mention names, but there's been certain monsters in the past right. where they were lightning in a bottle. And you were like, holy cow, dude, that guy is nonstop energy. And then you see him the following year and you're like, holy cow, what happened to him? Right. And you're like, dude, he is just not the same. And I don't think that's fair either. Yeah. If I can't go out and do what I, uh, what I want to do, what I, what I think I'm capable of doing, you know, I'm watching my dad right now deal with this too. My dad's going to be retiring this year. And my dad is constantly telling me his body's breaking down. Right. And that's where that's where it, it, it's kind of sentimental for somebody like Ed, myself, Chopper, Virus. By the way, this was Chopper's idea, pretty much to end at the fiftieth. Because, sorry to interrupt you, but the reason why this happened is because there's a lot of monsters that say, "Yeah, I'm going to retire on my tenth. I'm going to wait on my fifteenth, and that's a good number." But he, the way he sold it to us was, well. Isn't that kind of making it about themselves, which 
not to sound weird about it, but I, I guess, but what, the way he sold it to us was, what if we just wait till Scary Farm's 50th right. and make it about Scary Farm and not about ourselves? Yeah. And then he, he, we were sold instantly. But Yeah, you know. because, because I, I, I think this is lost on some people, not everybody. The event's not about you. Mm -hmm. And I tell people this all the time because it hap it's happened to me twice. Right. In 2013, like I told you, the guy that had the bee space before me, Mike, changed the costume. He had blondish hair. I went with black hair. The whole costume was different. The whole concept was different. The only different, the only thing that was the same was the face. Right. And I, I was actually doing the buffet then too. And I'm walking through and this lady stops me and goes, Hey, can I get a picture with you? And I'm my, and uh, I was like, okay. And she goes, Oh man. She goes, yeah, I get a picture with you every year. Wow. And yeah. I looked at her and I said, you know, uh, just to let you know, the gentleman that had this face before me no longer works. I'm brand new. This is my first year wearing this face. Fast forward to last year or not last year, but two years ago. Right. Some ladies like, Hey, can I get a, you know, I want to get a picture. You know, I love getting a picture with the pig twins, blah, 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 blah. You know, this is so great. I, I do this every year. I go, yeah, I've only been the pig twin now for about three years, ma'am. Oh, what happened to the girls? And I try to tell people this all the time. You are replaceable. Yeah. Once you're done working this event, not just a corporation, they will put somebody else in your face. You are not, everybody's expendable right. for the most part, you know, and you don't make it about yourself. You, you know, you go out and you have fun with your friends. And I've said it numerous times. If all my friends decided if chopper, Ed, whoever sledge, whoever says it goes, you know what, let's all just go and work a maze this year. Right. If everybody was on board with it and everybody wanted to do it, I'd go with them. Cause it's about my, it's about friendship. So fun. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be a lot of fun. No, it's I, about I, friendship. I, I, you know what? You just saying that is just awesome, man. I like hearing that because you're doing this, you know, not only are you doing this to have a good time, but you're doing it with your friends and that's what it makes yeah, it even exactly. more of a fun time. Um, and you gotta be humble. You have to be humble while you're doing it because right. you know, there's a lot of people that, that he said in the past that they might last in ghost town for a year or, or any street zone. And uh, there's this supposed, you know, hierarchy at Scary Farm, which is bullshit. We all know. <laughs> but people yeah. still cling to it. They go, okay, yeah, so now I've, uh, I'm have i working the event. I'm in a maze. And, oh, dude, I got Carnival or Ghost Town. It's like, then all of a sudden they think that they're better than everybody. Right. It's not supposed to be that way. It's just like a regular job. You know, I'm the kind of guy that... I'll talk to the I'll talk to the janitor in the bathroom, and I'll talk to the CEO, and I'll talk to them both the same way. I treat them all the same. I used to that's actually. What you're uh, supposed to do. I used to be a janitor and at Knott's. You're supposed to be humble and happy that you're at the event. You know, it, like he said, we're all expendable. If if I still want to work the event, and I'm having a good time, but they happen to say, "Oh, you can't work do this this year," I'll, I'll do whatever. Right. At that point, because I like the event. Yeah. But. Who's to say what's going to happen in 2022? I think at this point, wherever I work in 2022, and that's the 50th, I'll think about it. But the sad part is, uh, uh, if we come back in 2022, that would have been the 50th. Right. So, so now I have to question things. Do I want to go out that year? Or do I want to go out what officially would be the 50th, which would be 2024? Right. Right. Dude, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to be 56 in 2024 because I'm 52 now if I'm doing the math right. Right. Yeah, you're good. 2024. Uh, yeah, 52. I'll be 55, 56. Yeah. yeah. So now we can go a year further and think, okay, we don't know what's going to happen at this point. What say it comes back in 2023? Right. You know, what do you do? Um, now, I don't think, Jeremy, I told you this yet, but – I was texting shopper and he goes, you know what? I think I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm going to work, see if I can work till 2024. I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with that original idea. And, and I thought, well, that, that might, that might inspire me to do it too. Right. So. I and mean, by the way, that doesn't, that doesn't mean like Ed said, that doesn't mean that we would even be the same characters. Right. Yeah. Because they can change that at any point. 
Yep. The, the one thing, I, the one thing I, that I did really like was the last year we worked the event. The person that was in charge of our paperwork, uh, she's she's higher up there, and uh, she literally told me she goes, you know, we want you guys to come back every year because we know you older guys especially love the event. Right. You're not here to. Do you know who I am? You know. I, for me, it's weird because uh, yeah. I work yeah. like like Ed 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 works at Knots. I work at Knots year round, and it, it's it's a funny story. Everyone laughs every every freaking time. I've probably seen you guys there in twenty. I used to work there in twenty sixteen, summer of twenty sixteen. I got I got. Uh, I there. didn't start working there well, until uh, eighteen. Eighteen. Uh, I've been a train band there since two thousand thirteen. So maybe you've seen we probably, me. We probably ran into each other. I, I had I a different look. Surface, so. I didn't have long hair. I, I look different, I'm guessing, back then. I mean, uh, there. I, I usually work in the uh, panning for gold area. Okay. Uh, and I love that area. It's great. It's right by Ghost Rider. I like to give people a hard time when they're walking by Ghost Rider. We <laughs> sit next. And I was working one day, and I was sitting there, and these two boys are walking by in the line for Ghost Rider as they're walking towards it. And I was talking to somebody. I don't know. And the kid, like, kind of stopped and backed up. He goes, excuse me, I don't mean to interrupt you or nothing. And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, uh, are you one of the pig twins from Ghost Town for Not Scary Farm? <laughs> and, I, and I like looked at him. I'm like, yeah. And he goes, oh, man, I recognize your voice. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. That was distinguishable. <laughs> I, I, I was like, dude, this guy literally was just walking by, heard my voice, and stopped. I was in Target like two months ago. <laughs> and it's the Target right here on Orange Serpent and uh, – western so it's right down the street from Knox. right yeah i know it's exactly one yeah and i was in there shopping and i was paying for stuff and i would start talk i started talking and out of nowhere this older lady points she goes you're the pig twin for not scary farm and i'm like <laughs> holy cow and i'm like yeah and i'm like oh you, you know and she's like i follow you on instagram and, da, da, da. and i'm like oh my gosh I'm and glad i'm like I don't talk out there man i'm glad all i do is hiss i'm Actually, you know what? That's not true, Ed. We recognized you immediately, and we're like, we know who you are, and we respect the fuck out of you. Why? Because I'm a walk? I don't know how we knew uh, who you were, but we knew who you were at the concert. Ed, Ed has a very distinct walk. If, if it's really dark and you see it, yeah. okay. Ed kind of walks like a Sasquatch with his arms down. <laughs> you kind of know when Ed's coming because you're like, oh, dude, there, here comes Ed right now. And he's like, hey, what's up, guys? Yeah. You know, and you're like... Dude, it's Ed Cobb. He's here. <laughs> yeah. You know, but I, I, but I, mean, I think you noticed me because of because of YouTube. I think that's how we yeah. figured out who you were. You we were watching your YouTube. You. Uh, yeah. You Ed. We were watching your YouTube videos prior. Do I have Do I have video of me on? You know, I have to look at my YouTube. I haven't looked in a while. Uh, do I have video of me as an Ed on YouTube? I, no, I, I think your I think your picture is yeah, a your picture, picture of you. Oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. okay. Um, yeah, but my favorite one's the, the drunk, uh, the drunk video. I forget what, who's in it. Oh, me and oh, the I'm yeah, thinking, yeah, uh, yeah. 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 you need to upload all the uh, the uh, um, the Ed Cobb Instagram videos on the YouTube page, man. Um, you know what? There's a way to do that, but it, it's gonna mute the video because of the music, huh? Yeah, because that's what Instagram does. If you save it or share it uh, uh, elsewhere, it'll it'll mute it. it. I mean, you can download the video. You just tell but, me what music you want, and I'll throw. You know it what? There. You know what? Yeah, I could download all of them, or unless you want to, and then you just uh, uh, put them together and put a soundtrack. Yeah. What's up to you, man? <laughs> I'm it's down, dude. It's gonna. I, be I, I just think it's hilarious because I'll be like, I like, it's not even messages on Instagram. I'll be like hanging out with people. They're like, dude, I haven't seen an Ed Cobb Instagram <laughs> thing. I, I'm surprised we're doing it. tonight podcasting with Ed Cobb. Um. You know, that, that can happen. Well, <laughs> you have to whip your phone out now and do it because. I get the fo- we Hold on. Is this really happening? But I have, right to talk, I have to talk, though, because when I'm talking is when the screen will pop up, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the way it works, right? So, yeah, pretty much. I, I, pretty much. Am I on, the, am I on now, Jeremy? Yeah, is you're my, on. Okay, see, I'm up now. So, hi, guys. I'm on uh, Zoom now. What's up? Podcasting with Ed Cobb. <laughs> what kind of soundtrack I'm going to get? Yeah, there, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> I just can't believe that it, this made it, man. I, I, you don't know. I'm fanboying yeah, now. 
I'm excited to see what song he's gonna put now. Because he, he puts gonna... like the whole soundtrack I listen to every day on Spotify. Hey, uh, hey, you guys, I'll be right back, okay? All righty. Well, you know that that's the thing. You you never know, uh, uh, guy. Dude, this one this one could actually be a tough. Oh, dude, we're going uh, Def Leppard. Def Leppard. We're going Def Leppard. Def Leppard. No, 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 Def Leppard. <laughs> <You're no way. laughs> What is he uh, doing? I, 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 I'm, I'm like looking right did now. Did it for Christmas? He just got the Def Leppard box. Or no, I. Uh, it was a gag gift. My dad got him a Def Leppard, uh, the singer from Def Leppard. Right. Because uh, Ed uh, says he sounds like a Neanderthal. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I love it, dude. I, I. I'm just glad we got to do it. Uh, I'm fanboy now. I'm about to save that. There one. it is. It's there, man. We we made it onto the, the, the famous Ed Cobb. What's yeah, it, 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 you know, you know, the one thing I hate though is it just keeps playing, and you're like, shit, I just want to type, yeah, just so I can get it over. Yeah, I feel that. No, it's it, it does that a lot, and when that happens, there we go. I'll be on a freaking, I'll be talking to someone, and it's all loud, and I'm like, shit. Um, no, I, I think this honestly, if we can, uh, and, and a good way to to wrap things up, man. I I appreciate. Whether you guys hang it up this year, whether you hang it up next year, I we, I think I can say, speak for all of Knights of Horror when we say we appreciate the hard work and dedication that you guys put into these characters to bring the the lore and story of Ghost Town to life, to just bring the, the lore and the story of the entire event to life. I, I think that's why fans like us return every year because we like to see what's next in the story, especially last year when, when they did – or 2019 when they launched the origin storyline, which I think was fan – Oh, that was a, it was a beautiful maze. Yeah. That that was a that was a love letter tribute to Ghost Town right there, and I loved every minute of it. Well, they actually asked us to come in and do. I I guess my silhouette is in there. Oh. I never, I never actually walked. I only walked through it once. Right. Because I don't go there on my night off. We get one night off. Right. And I usually tend to try to get that right dead center so I can rest that night. Right. Uh, but they actually had a few of us come in and do uh, a video thing. And they said, oh, yeah, this is going to be going into origins of us transforming into our character. Right. Well, that was fun. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. I kind of wish uh, I had seen it, you know, because, I mean. Was it in the maze or there was actually a little light show facing off the uh, stage wall that actually showed a lot of transformations? That's probably what that was. Yeah. Uh, they just asked me to come in and uh, basically they had me get in the suit. <laughs> And uh, they put the face on me and everything and just had me like, ah, and just do the thing. And right. I was like, okay, cool. You know, I, I had no idea what it was for. Yeah, I well, didn't know he already what, mentioned well, me in his story. Yep, there it is. So what, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do like I usually do, put it on my story so I can highlight it and put it in my highlight on Instagram called My Stalker. If my you haven't stalker. noticed, I have one. I have an Instagram called uh, a highlight on it called My Stalker. And it's got a picture of Jack Nicholson knocking on the door in the shining. I love it. Little uh, pigs. Yeah. Little He's pigs. Yeah. yeah, you know, but uh, yeah, this has been a lot of fun. I'm I'm glad that uh, you allowed us to come on and just uh, shoot the uh, proverbial shit with you. Yeah. You know, and uh, yeah. no. you know, the only thing I I, I can tell guests is you know, hopefully at some point we do uh, return. Hopefully. Uh, be kind, and, 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 and remember guys it's a job uh and uh be polite to just be polite yeah you know like uh, real quick i mean there was like one night if you guys know the mummy yep. chase and then there was another gentleman that uh, i'm not going to give his haunt name because it's well swamp ass uh <laughs> we actually we actually caught a guy over by the candy store smoking a joint making out with two chicks at one time that's pimp right behind the uh the bank it probably was, was ed 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 cobb you know he's he's known <laughs> he's, he's... no it wasn't ed cobb <laughs> because this poor guy paid for that because me and chase were just walking by in our oh, wait a minute because i look like this now you think i smoke pot no i think because you're a player that you can score two chicks at the same time uh, Easy, done it. That's sure. Okay, thank you. <laughs> but uh, uh, Swampass actually like looked at me and Chase. I wasn't listening. He's, he's waving us down, and we're and we're like, "What?" He's like, "Dude, there's a guy back there. He's making out with two chicks, and he's smoking a joint. Let's scare him." And I'm like, "Okay." 
So we all like literally got in a line and just stood on the side of the building. And he's like, on the count of three, we're just going to haul ass and turn that corner and scare the shit out of him. And we're like, okay. So he, you know, one, two, three. And we just ran, turned the corner. This dude fell off the fence he was sitting on. And there was a cactus right behind it. Oh. He landed on the cactus and he screamed. And but it, it was the weird part was he wasn't screaming in pain. He was screaming, I wasn't smoking the joint, man. <laughs> he was more concerned with trying to make it sound like he wasn't smoking a joint. The two chicks are freaking out. Let's get out of here. And we just turned around and hauled ass out of there. <laughs> and that was probably one of the best freaking moments I ever had. I was like, wow, dude, that guy fell in the cactus and didn't even care. And what about I don't you? know. If- what, what was the best moment you ever had working that? That, that event before we log off, man. Uh, me? Yeah. Um, well, it, it was kind of like a, like, a, like a cartoon moment for me because uh, I was walking. I was actually on the way to the, to the secret bathroom at the time in Fog Alley. I know where that bathroom is. And, and I was walking by. Uh, some dude was holding a funnel cake. And, and, and oh. I think he not, not even took one bite of the funnel cake. And when he saw me, he freaked out and he tossed it perfectly in the air. It was like a cartoon because it, it all shot in the air really high and pieces went <laughs> all over me and uh, Antho and, and someone else all over the ground. And it was a misty night and me and Antho look at the ground and you know, when, when that powdered sugar gets mixed in with a, with the dampness, it gets slippery. All right. And, and all Antho could say was like, oh great, now we're going to fall. <laughs> I'm thinking <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> but what I know, after I hey, it was break time, I go to the the cruise nest, our little cafeteria, yeah. and I take my hat off, and you, you know the top of the cowboy hat is you know dipped, you know in the middle, right? And I didn't know, but there is a just a crap load of powdered sugar all over my hat, and I didn't even. It, it's like I almost forgot that incident happened. But I guess it all happened like a cartoon, and it just came all over my hat. Oh man, it was it was funny, man. I guess you have to be there. I'll I'll leave you guys with this. If you guys ever need an easy scare, hit up Sammy. He's got you. It's always the quiet ones. Yeah. I'm glad that you got a long Zoom video out of this because I was thinking, is it going to be like a half hour, an hour? I I knew with you two, it was going to be a good – this was a solid hour and a half, and I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I – I could talk to you. We could both talk to you about more stuff, but we could do that another time. Maybe like have a part two or something. Hey, man. You know what? We also have another podcast. Shoot the shit. Come on through. We got you. Yep. Um, no, I, I, Is I, your I, podcast literally called Shoot the Shit? We have a podcast called <laughs> yeah. Shoot the Shit. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was being funny, but I guess not. <laughs> no, we have a Mindless Horror Podcast and Shoot the Shit. And Shoot the <laughs> Shit, it was a podcast to take a break from all the horror and just talk about anything we feel like it. Yeah. We're shooting the shit. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I want to personally thank both of you for coming on the show today. It was just a blast listening to all your stories, just to, just to get to know you guys a little bit better. Um, uh, you know, just to get a behind the scenes of everything. It was awesome. And I, I really enjoyed myself today. I a lot of laughs, mix of emotions here today. And I, it was such a solid podcast. Uh, honestly, probably the greatest way to start 2021 right here with the Milestone podcast. So I want to thank both of you for Thank that. you. I hope so. No, no, no. Thank you for having us. Yeah, and I, I know that last week you were texting me and and you texted me about about, you know, we, we look up to you guys and and you know, a lot of people know me that, that, that I joke A lot of people look up to Ed Cobb, so Can I finish please Mr. Trump? <laughs> um, you know, I I don't want to say that I have like a hard time with praise, but it's like, come on, dude, get better standards. And I joke with them. Right. And and so I, well, when you said we look up to you guys, I go, well, we definitely don't look down at you because we're all equal in this whole right. thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm just happy to be there and happy to do it. And I'm happy to, to, to know that I might get people's attention like yours and Sammy's. Right. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I learned about doing all of this uh, from the start is just never say no to an opportunity. And I, I, I have never said no to an opportunity. And we've just we've had an amazing opportunities to get to do through the channel. And I think through the end of the day, you know, I always still remember where I came from. And that's never going to change because the way I run my yep. channel is, you know, uh, about haunt events, horror. And I'm just going to give my honest opinions about both. And uh, if someone doesn't like my opinion about what I have to say about the haunt scene or the horror scene, then, you know, I'm sorry I didn't get to please you, but 
You all you gotta do, all you gotta do, your brother, is just tell him it's an opinion. It's an opinion, yeah. You can't, you can't please all the people all the time, dude. Yeah. And that's in anything in life, not just scary form. Yeah. You know, it's just the way it works. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I just, you know, I, I say what I have to say about the the horror world, the haunt world, and I just try to be as real as possible with the, the fans because, in the end of the day, I don't want him, I don't want them to think that I'm doing this for money or fame. I'm not. The, when I start, are you this, sure? Are you sure? Are you sure, Anthony? You ain't been talking to Ed because Ed says the same thing about his fans. <laughs> By the way, uh, once again, uh, Anthony, he just interrupted you. He is totally Trump. <laughs> wrong. Uh, I like that. Wrong. Wrong. Hat on. wrong. It's all wrong. Um, no, but, it, you know, it, it's just always been about, for me, when I started this. <laughs> my fans. <laughs> when, when, I, when I started this, I just wanted to just voice my opinion and, and connect with the community. And I think through this, we, we have. Uh, we're, we're like 124 episodes today of the podcast and I've had so many great people on the show and I want to continue to do so. So uh, the invitation for you guys to come back is always here. The door is always open. So you just let us know and we'll set it up. Yeah. Let me know about your little movie someday too. Oh, I know. I told Ed, I said, if I ever did a movie, I'm going to cast him in a role. Cause I saw him do a little, little bit of a uh, acting. And I was like, this is, phenomenal. <laughs> this is Academy award worthy. Once again, once again, get better standards, buddy. Come on. <laughs> you got to give everyone a shot, dude. You never know until you try. You no, know, you, you know what, Anthony, true story. Ed actually used to sign autographs right in Knott's Berry farm. Yeah, during scary farm. No, sorry. You, you never signed an no. autograph in, in, during scary farm. I signed it as Clint Eastwood, not as me. Clint Eastwood. Dude. Because someone was playing a joke on me. It was Halloween <laughs> night a few years ago. And so one of our friends made like 50 copies of me on a piece of paper. As <laughs> Slither the snake. And, and it took me by surprise. The first person that, that, that gave me that piece of paper, they go, will you sign this? And I'm thinking, what the I'm like, I'm working here. So I grabbed it and I signed it at Clint Eastwood. <laughs> well, that turned into a big, long thing. And a couple people came up to me and asked me to sign. And it was irritating. <laughs> and one of, the, one of the tech people got a hold of that piece of paper that said Clint Eastwood and showed me, showed me that later in the night. And they go, was that you that signed it? And I kind of was like, <laughs> <laughs> go, yeah, that was yeah, And they go, hey, don't do that. Just don't do that. I go, okay, it's cool. You got it. <laughs> uh <laughs> Uh, yeah, that I mean, you guys, honestly, I've like I said, this podcast was a mix of emotions, and I loved every minute of it, and I can't wait. I hope everyone enjoyed uh, watching this, if you've made it thus far, um, which I hope you did, because these two are very interesting, and I was just... To say the least, I guess. <laughs> uh, but guys, I, I, I promise you, when this, when this pandemic comes to a chill, I'm going to buy you guys some beers. And we're gonna hang out and chill and have a good time. Good luck, dude. Trying to find something I ain't had. <laughs> you know what? Whatever. Well, we'll whatever you want. We'll drink it, you know. I, I just, I just. You know, discovered... It doesn't have to be something you haven't had. It's just a beer. I'll just have a Guinness. It's fine. I just, I, I just tried a Jack beverages. Daniel's cider that was peach flavored, and it was delicious. Oh, they have a peach flavored one now. Oh, I can't say I've had that one. What, what you gotta do is you gotta mix. You gotta mix. What you do is you get some apple cider, right. heat it up. And then add the uh, Jack Daniel cider to it. Oh, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, I'm when they they start it. when they start selling that stuff, that's what I did, and I got like three or four girls hooked on it. Nice. I gotta try that. Uh, I'm always willing to try anything. I love Jack and Coke. That's the symbol. Let me kill Meister. That's my my hero. Just right so there. you know, um, I read yesterday that the, the Cauldron is technically has their patio open now. Oh, nice. So, and I mean. Dude, what are we going to do in the next few months? The answer is nothing. Right. So if you want maybe go to the cauldron or something, I mean, I'd, I'd be down. Let's go. I'm just going you know, to the cauldron with Ed Cobb. That's going to be. <laughs> I, I'm, just waiting. I'm, I'm, I'm still waiting on my stimulus check, man. I haven't gotten that yet. Freaking Dude, that is so You know, I got mine 10 minutes after midnight. Lucky. Um, it's so. Everyone it's, around me got it, and I, I checked my bank account, and it still had. Uh, are you like, Wells Fargo? No, I'm with uh, Schools First. Okay, well maybe that's so am I, too. but I, I went with a paper version, so it's probably gonna be like uh, two more weeks. Yeah. They said if you didn't get it by yeah, the, if you don't get it by the fifteenth, uh, I think they said or the twelfth, I don't remember, but uh, all right, gentlemen, thank you so much for being on the show today. I really Holy appreciate shit. it. And I love thank you. I love this. You guys are always welcome back. Thanks, guys. If you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button with that bell notification be aware every time we put up a new video. If you guys are listening to this on Spotify, uh, Apple Podcast, wherever you're playlist for podcast is 
Uh, make sure to give that podcast a like because it, it helps us a lot to, to get feedback as to what you guys like. Um, also, follow us on social media at the Knights of Horror on Instagram and at Knights of Horror on Twitter. Check out our merch store. Links in the description below. Uh, my name's Anthony. That's Sammy, I guess, oh. but he's not talking. Oh, so. but, uh, for your boy Sam, I didn't know if I was muted or not. <laughs> well, yeah, we have Jeremy <laughs> today. We have Ed today. Great people. Hope you guys enjoy this podcast, and we will see you guys next week with a very special guest. Peace.